All right guys, welcome to what used to be our kitchen. So we had a big island here and cabinets all the way around to include a load bearing wall that prevented us from opening up this space. So today I'm gonna to show you guys how we remove that and set these beams in place to open up this entire concept. We'll also talk about how to spot a load bearing wall because there is one key factor that will show you guys whether or not a wall is load bearing or just a partition wall. So let's get started and welcome to the Comar Project. If you guys watched the first video in this renovation series, you know that we had a huge demo party where we invited all of our friends and they helped us remove all of the drywall. And that's where we're starting with this one. We need to remove all of this drywall from this load-bearing wall so we can actually support it and get rid of it. I think you did good. And after a little bit of cleanup, this is what that wall looked like between the hallway and our kitchen. All right, so in order to put the main beam that's gonna run across the entire house, we need to support the floor from underneath. So what we're doing here is building a temporary wall, and then we can start cutting out all the joists. All right, so things are moving super quickly and my contractors actually set up the temporary walls without me having the camera right there. So um, I didn't get too many shots of that. So what I'm gonna do right now is actually set up a temporary wall so you guys can see that entire process and then we can remove our load bearing one. Let's go. So for now, we're just going to pretend that those posts that we have installed are a load bearing wall and the process is going to be exactly the same, but at least you guys will get a better visual this way. After marking two feet away from our load bearing wall, we took our laser and transferred those marks to the ceiling. It's important that your top and your bottom plate are perfectly in line to help transfer that load. Once I had my marks on the floor and on the ceiling, I enlisted the help of Honey Bunny to help me install that top plate. We started by screwing in three inch construction screws into every single joist and we just worked our way all the way down till that top plate was secured. And for the bottom plate, we did the same exact thing, except we placed the screws in between where the two by fours will be set so they are not in the way when we install them. Now what do we do, babe? Wall. Yeah, kind of wall. Temporary. Temporary wall. <laughs> 94 and a quarter. 94. So far. Huh? Consistent so far because I built the house. Which one should I use, the black one or the fancy one that the girls gave me? Rainbow. Of course. <laughs> hey, rainbow. When measuring for your vertical two x four supports, you want to take exact measurements in each location. There may be times where your ceiling might be off a little bit or your floor has settled in certain locations. So taking the time and sneaking up on your cut will give you the best result when building a temporary wall. And you want it tight enough, you don't want to be pounding it in with a hammer. You just want it tight enough where you can tap it with your hand because if it's too tight, you're actually forcing your floor up. And if it's too short, then, you know, your floor might sink on it and you don't want to be shimming. You want these to be exactly right. Just a little tap. And you might have noticed that I'm not supporting at each joist location. I'm placing a support on every other one. This is a temporary wall and that top plate will transfer the weight equally to the studs and placing them every 24 to 32 inches will carry that load if that wall is perfectly plumb. All right, so our temporary is up and we're ready to move on to that load bearing wall. All right, so what is a load bearing wall and how can you tell whether or not a wall is load bearing or just a regular partition wall. Well, this is a perfect example of a load bearing wall. It has a double plate. 99% of the time, a load bearing wall is going to have a double top plate. That's just the way that they are built. Now you may run into a situation where you have a load bearing wall that doesn't have a top plate, but that's a big no-no and you just need to investigate a little bit more. So you really have to investigate what's going on up above your wall to make sure that that is a load bearing wall. And if you're not sure, contact a framing contractor or a structural engineer, and they will be able to tell whether or not the wall you're trying to remove is a load bearing wall or not. All right, so 84 Lumber is here. They're delivering stacks of lumber, everything from two by fours, two by sixes, all the plywood and all the beams. So now we can 
start making this house look like, you know, a real house. So this is what our second floor looks like and you can see that we have a main wall that runs directly down the center and right underneath where our beam needs to be installed. So to keep it from twisting and racking, we temporarily secured a micro lamp across it to help keep everything in place before touching that load bearing wall underneath. Removing a wall is not rocket science. Once everything is braced and supported, it becomes nothing more than just a partition wall. So a sawzall, a hammer, and some brute strength will make it disappear in no time. And for the entire house renovation, I did end up hiring a framing contractor. Originally when we bought this house, the plan was to go room by room and DIY everything ourselves. But as the design and the scope of the entire project grew, our ability to live in this house went out the window completely. I mean, we have no plumbing, heat, AC, or electricity, other than a couple of outlets for power tools. So having a trustworthy contractor to help us with this process is definitely a bonus. But there is no reason why you couldn't open up your own space if you did your research and did it right. All right, so these are the micro lamps that we are gonna be putting in into our ceiling. And each one is an inch and three quarter and we're doubling them up, which means that they're gonna be three and a half. These beams are 18 inches high and uh, there's a couple of sections in there where we actually have to triple them up. We have a very long span where we have to put three of them together um, and that's where you really need to contact an architect or a structural engineer. Make sure that the load for your house is the proper load because you know a flush ceiling is nice but if it doesn't hold that weight then it kind of defeats the purpose of doing everything so we're gonna have a few inches sticking down we'll wrap it make it look all real nice but you know unfortunately we're stuck with 18s because that's what our load is our entire roof line that roof right there sits on these so it holds pretty much the whole second floor plus the roof line and that's why we got the 18s In order to get our beams installed, we need to cut out a section of our floor joists from below. And after some precise measurements, it was just a matter of cutting out those floor joists with a circular saw and a sawzall. And you can actually see where we're cutting, the floor joists are meeting. So one floor joist comes from our kitchen and the other one comes from our hallway. And that's another good way of telling where a load bearing wall would be. So you would have a load bearing wall right underneath where those two come together and meet. All right guys, today's a very big day because we've finally gotten to the point where we're gonna be installing our main beam that sits um, and holds the entire roof line of the house. Really exciting. The guy started by installing the first 14 inch 20 foot beam that will run down the middle of our house, which has a 55 foot span. And to get it all leveled out to the second floor, we actually ended up using a car jack. Yep, sometimes the simplest solution is the easiest. And after it's all leveled out, we can nail it to the ceiling joist on one side and then install the second one right up to it the same exact way. Then on the front of the house, we had to install four micro lamps together because we were running a perpendicular floor from that span to create a landing on the second floor. So again, our structural engineer kind of stepped in and determined the size and the quantity of beams that we had to install. Just like on the back side of our house where it opens up to our kitchen, we had to install four 16 inch micro lamps because it was our longest open span throughout the entire house. All right, and these are paralamps, uh, or PSLs, whatever you want to call them. And essentially what they are is just a micro lamp that's glued together and it holds a way stronger load than if you were to put a couple two by fours together. So this is gonna hold up all of our beams. 
All right, and that load needs to be transferred down to something, right? So we're in my basement right now, and I'm gonna show you um, where those uh, PSL posts are going to be sitting. So we have a steel beam that runs the entire span of our basement, and they are supported by these steel columns. They're actually wrapped in a little bit of plastic, but that load is transferred all the way down to the floor and there is a footing on top of a foundation that kind of supports everything. And the entire load, everything from here going up to our micro lamps, everything is loaded down here on these posts. So that's one of those things that you got to make sure you get right. Those loads have to be correct because your entire house sits on it, right? To get to the steel beam from above, we needed to cut a hole in our subfloor big enough that we can work around. And once we figured out the exact location, we could start prepping the PSL posts for installation. Now, the reason I went with a PSL post versus standard lumber is because it is denser, stronger, and carries a much higher load than regular sawn lumber. It has consistent properties and fire resistance that are superior than just regular raw wood. You can support longer spans, giving you more design options with an open floor plan like ours. And this was a big talking point with our architect. With standard lumber, we would have to have four middle support locations, and with a PSL, we are able to get rid of a post at the front door opening up the entire entryway with only three columns. And that was the biggest thing for us, making sure that we have an open floor plan when we come into the house. The other option that was on the table for us was to go with a steel beam across the entire span, but that created its own logistical and financial challenges that I was not ready to undertake. We would have to put additional supports in the basement involving cutting into the slab and putting in column supports, and that's just something that I was not ready for. So LVL beams and PSL posts we went with. And honestly, guys, I think it turned out great. And once everything is wrapped with faux beams, it's going to create another architectural feature that we were not expecting, but is going to make this house unique and give it a little bit more character. Open floor plan, guys. Um, almost, we got a little bit of cleaning, but we're pretty much there. Our kitchen, our living room, and our dining room are completely open. There's no walls. We're having some problems running electrical because we don't have any walls, but the open floor plan is what everyone wants these days and we're no different. It did take a lot of planning with our architect. We wanted to make sure we have the right size beams with the right size posts spanned properly so that we don't have drywall cracking, we don't have tile popping on us, you know, five years down the road. So it's very important that you consult an architect or a structural engineer to get this right. Hopefully you guys got something out of this video or at least seen what the process looks like. So you can make a decision on whether or not you wanna try and open up your space because it is a little bit involved. For us, we can finally vault the ceiling in our living room because we have that big 16 inch beam. So make sure you guys are following along by hitting that subscribe and the bell notification. Thank you so much for joining me on this experience. I'll see you guys next time. <laughs> your tile and your... Unbelievable. Yes, who has COVID? Honey. Can't even drink my coffee. Let's do it. Let's go. Nope. Oh, I got nervous. <laughs> this is in the way. I'm nervous too. <laughs> Sweetheart, yeah. you okay? Yep. You ready to go home? Yeah. All right, let's go home. I think we've had enough for today, huh? Mm -hmm. Take care of me. <laughs> let's go take care of her. Come on. <laughs>